Okay, I'm here with Morgan Gray. We're live. We're talking the Bureau XCOM Declassified coming to PS3. So I was a huge fan, huge fan of XCOM Enemy Unknown. But this one, this one's a little bit different. This is more of a tactical squad-based shooter. Give me the opening premise here. We haven't heard from this title for a while. Certainly think so. It's a bit of an experiment. We kind of had two fundamental goals starting off. One, to tell the never before told origin story of XCOM as an organization. So we're going back to 1962, height of the Cold War, space races on. That's a cool backdrop to tell our tale. The other one was to find a sort of real time third-person expression of the core tenets of the franchise, which as a fan you know are generally things like terror, tension, tactics, team, technology, a lot of T's in XCOM, right? <laughs> so for us, we wanted to translate that isometric turn base, sort of I'm a God's eye view commander sitting away from the battle, and to put you in the boots of the squad leader in the field so you could actually feel what it's like to do this tactical gameplay while the bullets are flying at your head. So where do we find ourselves at the start of the game? It sounds like XCOM as a, as a unit, as, as a bureau, is, is starting out, but I mean, where do, what is the first sort of call to action. So your entry into the story is as Agent William Carter. You have a special delivery for the guy that will ultimately become the first director of XCOM. Uh, at that point, uh, it's a bureau dedicated to defending America against foreign threats. Agent Quickly, so aliens committed. invade, and our concept of foreign has to expand a little bit beyond the Soviet <laughs> Union to something a little more, you know, astronomical, anything that doesn't come from our little mud ball in space. And so at that point, uh, the plot kicks off. You get wrapped up in sort of an Andromeda Strain-esque action. This bureau be quickly comes rechristened to XCOM, pulling the best and brightest of the nation under duress. And so you're, they're still wheeling in the boxes and the crates. The logo's not even the wall. The paint's not dry. And you're there day one when XCOM gets founded. Well, that sounds like a terrific premise. I'm, I love the X XCOM Enemy Unknown. Are we going to be seeing sort of familiar creatures from that game, or is this a different take on on those creatures? Well, the best you know, the best XCOM games in the whole series, from the first to 1994, all the way through like Interceptor and Enforcer, and obviously Enemy Unknown. It's a menagerie of aliens, so we're bringing back some familiar faces with a fun sort of narrative contextualization on why you're seeing them. So things like the sectoids, silicoids, mutons, we're all but returning. We're also contributing to the alien lore ourselves by giving a whole new race of aliens called the Outsiders uh, that have their own sort of hierarchy and play into the general buffet of bad guys that XCOM is known for. Man, you're selling me on this. You're selling me on it. Enemy Unknown was my favorite game of 2012. Absolutely. I loved it. I played two times through on Iron Man. One of the things I loved so much about it was how hard it was. And it, it, it was just unforgiving, and you had to live with the consequences. Do those elements return here for the Bureau? Absolutely. So I like to stray away from hard, because I don't think it's hard for hard's sake. I think at the heart of a great XCOM game is a game that demands and requires skillful play. It asks a lot of the player. you got to use your brains. In ours, you have to use your brains along with a little twitch and build plans. And if you do that, you'll see success, right? It's always squad versus squad engagements. So, you know, one team against another. You're always outnumbered. You're always outgunned. But it's up to you to figure out how to use the resources at your disposal for victory. Failing that, you're going to see some guys drop. In our <laughs> game, you know, you have a host of agents, a roster, which is your team. You control them in the battlefield. If you do a good job, they live success. Bad, they get dropped. And if you can't get them back off, up, they're dead for good, and they're gone. And you've invested all this time. You've customized them. You've leveled them up. You've ranked them up. You've bought their powers. And now in our game, which is really interesting, because we have sort of a main campaign, a central narrative that's pushing our plot forward, there's no ability to farm a lot of additional ah. XP. You don't just get to delay the progress of that the That was what I did. I was, yeah. I was making sure I was very prepared and anybody will know before I, I, I push it on, but it sounds like that's not the case here. Well, yeah, you have aspects. You can obviously go on secondary quest lines. We call them sort of side missions that allow you to build up your roster and get them good to go so you can swap in more powerful replacements. But you can't just sit back indefinitely so that you make sure your next central story mission has good guys. You do a bad job in our game, you might have to move forward with the rookies and then <laughs> deal with that consequence, which that's is That's a rough awesome. one. Let's take a look at here. We're, we're, it looks like you're uh, you're you're in the squad, uh, your squad view here. Yep. We're checking out the surroundings. We're seeing the aliens, and this is not necessarily going to be a totally unfamiliar view for folks who played Enemy Unknown. Tell me a little bit about what we're seeing here. Sure thing. So this right up on the screen is Battle Focus. It's the interface that you use to control your squad mates and issue your own powers. And it's very akin to the classic isometric control of your squad. Albeit ours is a real-time per uh, perspective. A little slowed down to get at that, you know, you focus in under, under duress. But you can do all the same tactical movements. In fact, it's required for success. So you can issue movement orders, position guys on the flanks, do target prioritization ripple off the powers. The cool thing is you're also able to queue up things. So you can say, you go here, do this, then do that, 
go. So if you're like a football person, think of it a little bit like the huddle. And you also have the ability to call audibles on the battlefield. Our goal being to, you know, to bring that tension of, it's one thing to sit on your couch, stroking the beard, <laughs> you know, sipping your drink, oh, what will I do next? It's another to have to deal with that in real time. So we're trying to give that fantasy fulfillment for the XCOM fan that was like, what would it be like to be one of these guys? Now you're on the battlefield having to do it, and it's very rewarding. So in a way, it's very, you know, it's, it's hyper XCOM. And at first blush, many people might think, oh, it's a shooter XCOM, but there's a lot more sort of tactical DNA. I can see that here. It seems through. like it's almost complementary, the other side of the coin to Enemy Unknown. There's a shared sort of uh, foundation there, yep. but they're just sort of expressing themselves a little bit differently. Exactly. I mean, our true hope is to get some of the gamers that may think, you know, misguided as they may be. I don't like turn-based games, right? Like, yeah. bad viewpoint. But to bring them into the XCOM franchise via something that's a little more real-time, a little more tense, a little more action-y, but not an action game, as well as give classic XCOM fans a new perspective on the battlefields they're familiar with. Now, we're seeing some crazy weapons here. I love to, I love the weapons in Enemy Unknown, and I just love the, 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 the series and the way it approaches the arsenal. So let's talk a little bit about that. What are we seeing here? Sure thing. So when we kick off in 62, we're dealing with real-world weapons of the period, you know, sort of the bullets, shotguns, 45s, that sort of thing. As XCOM gains access to further alien technology, we start to go up the tech tree. So familiar weaponry like the laser rifles, laser pistols, through the plasma chain are all going to be there for the XCOM fan. Sweet. And a host of sort of new, uh, you know, fun ones and some old favorites like the blaster launcher yeah. from, you know, from the original. In addition to weapons, our game is a lot about also the powers and abilities that your agents get equipped with. So as you level them up and you customize them among their various classes, you get all sorts of sort of fantastical aspects of unleashing the you know, woe upon your enemies in the battlefield to give you a lot of tools in which to parse through the combat spaces almost like a puzzle come up with your own combination your own plan and then see how it goes awesome so i know you're probably not going to want to get too heavily into the story obviously you guys are still you know you're kind of making your big re-emergence here yep. and you're going to want to leave some you know some surprises to the player but What's kind of the journey look like? Obviously, the Bureau is sort of starting out. Yep. Where is this journey going to take our characters? Well, I mean, the biggest spoiler of all is that aliens attack, <laughs> and uh, we have to deal with them. So during the course of a story, it's one of the first times we're able to tell an XCOM story with a central character. William Carter is your viewpoint. So you're there from the progression of XCOM being founded, basically being put on our heels in the sort of nooks and crannies of America, fighting an enemy that's way above our ability to deal with. So you'll have to mount that offensive and go through that plot line with the additional characters as you gain an understanding of the enemy, start to be able to push back, and then ultimately defeat them. Along the way, there's a huge uh, number of different narrative devices. We have a conversation system. The base itself is almost a social space akin to RPGs in terms of it has its own secondary and tertiary quests. Interesting. That give a lot more narrative. And this is in between missions then. You're talking to different members of the team, and exactly interesting and you know so you have you know and you have an ability to have a little bit of agency of how the plot resolves itself oh. you know, the fate of uh, different american citizens that have been infected by a virus we call the sleepwalker virus is in your hand ultimately the resolution at the end is, is based on the choices and decisions that you make at a few critical junctures so it's, all, it's we're given a lot for the player to have a bit of say and how this all resolves itself and then spiking the ball up when we wrap our story you know this sort of hidden origin story you know we cannot let the russians know how close we came to defeat so our government has covered this up but we toss the ball up for a nod for games like Fraxis is Enemy Unknown or any of the classic games in the franchise is sort of the, hello guys, and now history resumes as you know it. So <laughs> it's, I think it's going to be very fun, and especially as an XCOM fan, there's enough nods in the in the DNA and the sort of the universe that we're tying into and then, you know, sort of rounding out that I think it's going to be a fun adventure. Now, I think it's so interesting that this game is set in the 60s. I mean, I, how, how are you guys, you're the creative director, how are you guys kind of approaching the period element of this game? Well, it's very important to us at 2K Marin to tell stories that go beyond just like, and then Aliens Attack, or with the you know, Bioshock 2, and you're back to Rapture. We want a little bit of subtext. I have a lot of secondary narratives. The 60s is a great period with the political tension between, you know, the arms race between the U.S. and USSR and the space race. It gives us a rich fabric, not the least of which is a social fabric of the time, dealing with issues of race and gender, right? It's not an America that we know today. So for you, the player, we use this backdrop. We go look at the period itself. So before going to Mad Men or the more modern looks back, which is obviously what we did, we looked at a lot of movies of the time. How did the 60s show itself to itself? Mm. You know, so we looked at advertising, we looked at movies, watched a lot of Hitchcock, classic James Bond. We obviously went back to Time magazines and different things in the period. Nothing's as valuable as Google Image and whatever oh, yeah. to try to get tone. And in general, just sort of sucked in as much as we could of the period because it's like like an RPG, it's our campaign setting and it's a rich campaign setting from which to draw these little micro stories from. And so we had a fun time dealing with it and dealing with issues that go beyond just alien invasion and touching on some of the, the social and political aspects of the time period because that to us told a richer story. 
Now, what would you say to people who are who are big fans of the turn-based tactical games who go at this and say, it's a little, I don't know if this is where I want this series to go. I mean, what would you say to them? Well, I think at its heart, even just in any XCOM game, it's not an everyone's cup of tea kind of franchise, right? It's a very specific type of gamer that likes that combination of strategic, tactical play, using their brain. I think, you know, as the fans of the franchise will see, I think it's going to be all very familiar to them at first, that unique perspective of being in the battlefield. And I'd urge them strongly to sort of go, this is worth your time to check out. Not the least of which is dealing with the origin story of the XCOM organization, which is going to be entertaining. I think for us, we're also very much interested in the non-XCOM fans, not the short sight, but, you know, the franchise fans, because there are, you know, there are, there are folks. But there's a whole host of people that all obviously have not come in to experience what XCOM has to offer. We hope to get the both of them, bring them together, and give them something unique and enjoyable. And I mean, you know, nothing would make me more pleased than for more people to play XCOM Enemy Unknown. If this is how they do it, then that's great. It looks like an awesome game. I'm totally sold based on what you're showing. Now this game has gone through a bit of a process. It first it started as more of a first person experience and it was kind of it was kind of shifting around a little bit. It feels like it looks like it's really solid. It looks like you guys know exactly what you're doing now. I even see, based on compared to some of the earlier stuff I've seen, I've seen more nods to Enemy Unknown, like some of the icons, the Absolutely. shield. Talk a little bit about was that was there like a moment with Enemy Unknown where you guys said, yes. There's, 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 there's a lot that this game does right. Let's let's take some of that stuff that works and apply it here. Yeah, I mean, first things first, Enemy Unknown from Praxis is a brilliant game. It is, like, it is. So I, I can't you know stress my nods to them enough. I think when we first showed the game, again, our basic premise was find a reinterpretation of the franchise. And so with XCOM being about the T's, technology team, terror attention, our first iteration focused too much on terror intention. It was a little more survival horror. Interesting. Which is an aspect of XCOM, but it's not really at the core. So in some ways, I like to say, we kind of goofed. We overemphasized. We took a look at what we were doing and went, what about team? What about tactics? We refocused more on those aspects to bring them to the forefront, keep the other aspects of seasoning. And then when we felt we had the combination right, we sort of thrown down the storm shields, barricaded ourselves in, and kept iterating. Obviously, we wanted to tie into you know sort of known franchise elements. The iconography and battle focus being one aspect of that. The here's valid cover, here's invalid cover, here's enemy sight lines. So that you know we feel that you know part of what is XCOM isn't just the story or the setting or the aliens. It's down to the interface. There's an interface that looks XCOM absolutely and, and speaks to what you'll be doing in XCOM game. So we wanted to emulate that as well. And obviously, there's no getting around the fact that like you know one of the biggest things that from Enemy Unknown from Firaxis did was put the franchise back on the map and show that it's not only a bunch of old men like you and my, me <laughs> who probably played it on our 46s when it first came out in 1994, but there's a bunch of new gamers that are interested in the franchise. So the biggest thing for us to take away was validation in that we can target that skillful gamer. We can say there's a slice of the gaming population, which isn't everybody and their mother, but a certain subset that wants a harder, more difficult game that we can cater towards and will come along for the ride that we're making. Another thing you mentioned, XCOM Enemy Unknown was so good at doing was getting that game. I, I actually never played XCOM before oh. Enemy Unknown, well, excellent. but I loved it and it was it made a slam dunk entrance on the console scene yep. on PS3. Beautiful UI, it worked like a charm. I never felt like I needed a mouse and keyboard. In fact, I preferred the interface on the DualShock 3. But I want to I want to talk a little bit more about one of the things I love so much about XCOM Enemy Unknown is the, is the upgrading and the advancement and the research. What, you know, the hive view that's in yep. XCOM Enemy Unknown. Are you, do you guys have an analog for this title? There are expressions of that. Again, the, the thing that we often say in the development team, it, it's about being a battlefield officer, not necessarily an office manager, which okay. is handled aptly by Enemy Unknown. So our goal is everything about you and your team out in the field. You are a squad leader. You're not the pan commander of the global XCOM organization. So our analog in terms of advancements and research technology is the RPG-esque progressions that you and your agents go through. Your ability to customize by the various classes, picking and choosing which upgrades, which powers you're unlocking, that a very specific set of what we call perk trees, ah. which is basically more akin to like leveling up an RPG character, along with the slow acquisition of technology, which is obviously a nod to the XCOM formula, and the finding and grabbing of equipment out in the battlefield, these things called backpack schematics, and the other like is our sort of more tactile, in-your-face, combat-oriented focus for what was traditionally like, I am now going to build a thermal generator here <laughs> and conduct research. Also, in our game, there is no in-between. In the classic XCOM formula, there are the days in between your missions. Our game is much more about the battle is happening every moment, every op, time is moving forward, and you're progressing through this narrative that is pushing at the seams for a conclusion and a resolution. So there really wasn't much time to say, and now we'll spend 14 days inventing laser pistols. <laughs> you know? But, you know, we think, you know, again, like, we're trying to provide a complementary experience to that classic XCOM formula versus something that is in a, like an affront or trying to take away. And we think that comparing the, you know, the two and putting them next to each other, we get a more rounded XCOM experience. So.
one more question for you. One sure. of the things I loved about the, uh, the, the series in general is it's, it's evaluation. You get kind of evaluated on your performance. Is that still an element that makes it? Absolutely. Oh, it, cool. The game judges you. Nice. I love, <laughs> I love to be judged. Yeah. What can I say? In a multiple ways. We judge your, you know, we have a post-mission analysis yes. evaluation. We judge you on your performance on keeping agents alive and or failing to do that. And so you do get that sense of there's someone going, am I doing a good job or not? And the, those degrees of success and failure are coming through. I'm sold. I awesome. am sold. When is this game out? It's coming out August 20th on PS3, and so uh, and the United States 23rd internationally. All right. Well, we're about out of time for the Bureau XCOM Declassified coming to PS3. Next up, we're going to take a live look at Diablo 3. Stay tuned. Sure.